Right. For today's lesson, we're going to start going more in depth about function notation. And it's going to be in a few parts. So this was just part one. So we have talked about mapping relation in the previous lesson. And we see f map from x to y. And we can, uh, we can say that under the function f, the image of 5 is 13. So 5 maps to 13. Uh, we can also say the value of the function is 13 when x equals 5. Uh, kind of cumbersome. I hate drawing arrows because my arrows never look good. Uh, so now let's go to function notation. La, la, la. A function notation is used to replace a mapping notation. Mapping notation no more. Under a function, the image of an element x in the domain is denoted by f and then in bracket x. It is read as f of x. In the example above, the function that maps from x to f of x can be defined by the formula f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. And then we have a function notation right there. f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. It is a function notation. We showed above that under a function f, the image of 5 is 13. We can write f of 5 is equal to 13. So here are the three different ways. Mapping notation. Ooh, I hate mapping notation. And then we have functional notation. Good. Or yay. I like function notation. Equation of the graph of the function. Well, don't really have a don't really have too much of opinion. I'll just draw this. Here's my no opinion face. Uh, okay. And just see how how when you evaluate the function at 5, you can write f of 5 and then just substitute all the x with 5s. In mapping notation, you kind of can do the same. Uh, f of x also provides a formula for the function f. It represents, can also represent the value of a function for a given value f, x. That's why it's so good. Just some quick notes. f of x does not represent f times x. It is a notation. It's just f of x. The name of the function is f. You can have a function f of x. You can have a function h of x. You can have a function g of x. Uh, f, g, h are very commonly used. But you can also use other letters like uh, a of x or even something like x of x. But then that gets confusing. So we don't use x, y, z as the uh, name of the function too much. I'll just write uh, f of x, g of x, and h of x are commonly, commonly used names for the functions. Uh, values of the independent variable represent the inputs of the function shown on the horizontal axis. Value of the dependent variable represents the output. So let's say f of x is equal to uh, f of x equal to y. So my independent variable is going to be x. And it's going to be shown on the horizontal axis. I'm going to write it this way. And my dependent variable is going to be y. And it's going to be shown on the vertical axis. Okay. Here's a quick function. f of x is equal to x squared plus 5. And g of x is equal to 4 minus x. Wow. f and g used very commonly. And then we also have h of x. Okay. So f of 3. This is going to equal to. So we just sub in. So every time we see x, we sub in 3. So this is going to equal 3 squared plus 5. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. g of 1. And again, every time you see x here, you sub in 1. So g of x will do 4 minus 1, which gives us 3. f of negative 2. So this is going to equal to negative 2 squared 
plus 5. Then 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. G of negative 2. Uh, well, now we just replace x with negative 2. So this is going to equal to 4 minus negative 2, which is 4 plus 2. We get 6. F of 0 minus G of 0. So F of 0 is going to be 0 squared plus 5 minus 4 minus 0. And again, I'm putting a bracket around G of around the function g so that the subtraction sign doesn't mess anything on the inside up. 0 squared plus 5 is 5, 4 minus 0 is 4, so 5 minus 4, which is equal to 1. Okay, consider the function f defined by f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x. x is an element of the reals. Determine f of negative 3. So this is going to equal to, just replace all the x with negative 3 here. So it's going to equal to 5 times negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3. Negative 3 cubed is going to be 27. 27 times 5 is going to be, or negative 27. 27 times 5 is negative 135, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, subtract negative 6 gives us plus 6, so 135 plus 6 gives us negative 100, uh, 129. Uh, we want to find the value of f when x is equal to 2. What they're saying is they want to find that f of 2 is equal to 5 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2. 2 cubed is 8. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 4 gives us 36. And just as a note, I write f using a handwritten f, but in the textbook they use a, a italic or lettering f. So this is what the textbook f of x is going to look like. Here is what my f of x is going to look like, just so you guys know. All right, the image of 7 under f. Same way of asking a different question. So this one just means what is the value of f of 7. f of 7 is 5 times 7 cubed minus 2x. Uh, the numbers are getting a little bit big, so I'm going to pull out my, oh, sorry. 2 times 7. So I'm going to pull out my trusty little calculator. You have 5 times 7 cubed minus 2 times 7. 2 times 7. We get 1701. Calculator count to save the day again. I'm going to write an expression for f of a. So again, we just replace everything uh, that is x with a. So this time it's going to be f of a is going to equal to 5a cubed minus 2a. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let's keep going. An expression for f of 2x. So in this case, we replace everything that has x with 2x. So f of 2x is going to equal to 5 times 2x cubed minus 2 times 2x. 2x cubed is 8x cubed. 5 times, 5 times 8x cubed equal, equal to 40x cubed minus 4x. And uh, it doesn't ask us to factor so we just simplified it by expanding and we're going to leave it there okay keep going if p of x is equal to 4x squared minus 6x plus 1 determine a simplified expression for p of x minus 3 so again we're going to replace everything with that has x in the uh 
function with x minus 3. So p of x minus 3 is going to equal to 4 times x minus 3 minus 6 times, squared here, 6 times x minus 3 plus 1. Now we have to expand this. So x minus 3 squared is going to equal to x squared minus 6x minus plus 9. And then we have minus 6x plus 3 plus 1. How you got this? You just foil the x minus 3 squared. All right, let's keep going. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times negative 6x gives us negative 24x. Negative 24x subtract 6x gives us negative 30x. 6 times 9 gives us 36. Whoa, whoa. 36. Oh, I forgot to multiply the 3 here. Uh, negative 6 times negative 3 is equal to positive 18. Uh, so, okay. 4 times 9 is equal to 36. 36 plus 18 plus 1 get us 5, 55. I think that's right. So our expression for p of x minus 3 is going to equal to 4x squared minus 30x plus 55. Let's keep going. Let's see how many more questions we have. We have two more questions, or maybe just one. We want to consider the function f of x is equal to 10x minus 3 x is the element of the reals. So they want us to determine the value of x if f of x is equal to 47. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say 47 is equal to 10x minus 3. We're going to add 3 on both sides. 50 is equal to 10x. Divide by 10 on both sides. 5 is equal to x. Let's add 3. Add 3. Divide by 10. Okay, solve the equation f of x is equal to negative 23. Same thing, just asked a different way. So this time, negative 23 is going to equal to 10x minus 3. We're going to add 3 on both sides. So negative 20 is equal to 10x. Divide by 10 on both sides, negative 2 is equal to x. And that's going to be our final answer. Uh, let's keep going. Consider the function x squared minus 5. x is an element of the reals. Evaluate f of 4. So f of 4 is equal to, and again, just replace everything that has x with a 4. This is going to be 4 squared minus 5. 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 5 is going to be equal to 11. So f of 4 is equal to 11. Uh, solve the equation f of x is equal to 4. In this case, 4 is going to equal to x squared minus 5. We're going to add 5 on both sides. 9 is equal to x squared. Then we're going to say, okay, what squared is 9? We're going to take the square root of both sides. But when we do that, we have to put in a plus or negative sign right in front of the square root of 9. Because when you square, let's like, say, negative 2, it's going to equal to a square root of, sorry, it's a square root of 2, which equals to 4. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus 3. Okay, so the equation f of t is equal to 75, where t is greater than 0. So similarly, f of t it's just going to equal to t squared minus 5. And then we have f of t is equal to 75. So 75 is equal to t squared minus 5. Uh, we add 5 on both sides. So 80 is equal to t squared. And then since t is greater than 0, we're only going to take the positive square root. So t is equal to the square root of 80. You can say because uh, t is greater than 0, t is equal to the square root of 80. 
And uh, do you guys have to simplify it? Let me take a look if you guys learned radicals yet. I'm not really familiar with the textbooks. Uh, uh, not sure, but I'm going to simplify it anyway. So if you learn how to simplify radicals, oh yeah, yeah, it says here, answer in the simplest radical form. So square root of 80 is equal to 4 times 4 times 5. Now group of force, so it's equal to 4 root 5. That's in the simplest radical form. As on questions, do them, get used to these function notations because we are finished with relations and we are not going to talk about relations pretty much from this point onwards. So the only thing we're going to touch on is different kinds of functions. And function notation is probably the only way of expressing the value of functions. So mapping notations, we don't use it anymore. Function notations, a lot, I would say uh, 70 to 80%. And then equation with a graph, uh, 30 to 20%. So get used to the function notation and uh, get good at it. See you in the next video.